We don't know how many apartments are upstairs, and we don't know if people were living in them at this time. However, we are told that firefighters are very confident nobody is inside of this building. And take a look at some of these ice chunks that were left behind. This one, for example, a good three feet long and another probably two or three feet wide. And, and that's exactly what 21-year-old Adam Field did. He shot his three-month-old boy while he was in his arms. They say even 7 percent is too much. They want it down to zero. Is that possible? It should be minus 5 percent. It, it, it should be a but reduction. But is that possible? Well, anything's possible, Pat. Chris, and the numbers are unofficial, but it sure as heck feels like a victory party here tonight at the Hotel Utica. I'm joined now by Richard Hanna. The, and that's right, two hours now from tip-off to the Sweet 16. SU taking on Butler tonight. A lot of SU fans starting to make their way into this beautiful city. The remains of Private David Jones were flown into the Griffiths Airport Thursday, the very day he was scheduled to come home on leave from the military. The 21-year-old's body was then escorted to his hometown. In the middle of the pouring rain, hundreds held umbrellas in one hand and American flags in the other and saluted in honor of the soldier. Are you surprised to see this many people out here? No. This is St. John's, Bill. <laughs> For the family of David Jones, the hardest part of this whole process is still not knowing who shot the 21-year-old. His family says he was found with a gunshot to his head in his army bunk. Jones's fiance's family says they do not believe he committed suicide. It's the whole part of not knowing too many people are changing the stories. You know, they just want to know they need peace, you know, of knowing what happened to him. I don't want to see my daughter go through this. You know, I didn't think at 20 years old she'd be planning on a funeral for her fiance. You know, so it's been tough for her. Private David Jones leaves behind a large family in St. Johnsville, including an aunt and uncle who helped raise him. In St. Johnsville, Pat Bailey, News Channel 2. Well, Kristen, a local contractor says that bid rigging was a common practice at Grow West. The man hired to do the city's portion of the investigation says that that appears to be true and that it was possibly not the only crime that was committed. A local contractor we will call Randy because he wishes to remain anonymous says he saw firsthand illegal bid practices taking place at Grow West. Um, I witnessed uh, people uh, that work for Grow West tell other contractors not to bid on a job, that it was all going to be taken care of. And I witnessed um, another contractor telling the person who won the bid what to bid. Randy says he was denied four projects from Grow West because he was not a part of the scheme. How do you have proof that this actually was going on? I saw it firsthand. What did you see? I saw um, a contractor, two contractors talking to each other, telling them this is what you need to bid in order to get the job. Corporate attorney J.K. Hage was hired by the city for their portion of the investigation. He says what Randy is saying coincides with the investigation, but it's not the only focus. Page says there is also a question as to where the federal grant money went after it was awarded to contractors. If um, $50,000, let's say, was spent on a given piece of property, uh, was all of that $50,000 worth of labor and materials actually applied to that piece of property? Or did some of it make its way elsewhere? Both Hage and Randy the contractor believe some people got rich and a lot of people got hurt. Would it shock you if at the end of this millions of dollars were misused and people go to prison? No. Now, J.K. Hage says our contractor we talked with is not the only one out there with information, and that, why, that is why he and other city officials are looking for your help. They want anybody that did any work or had a work done by Grow West to give the number on your screen a call right there, 792-0171. Now, during the time that this alleged bid rigging was going on, the executive director at Grow West was John Denelsbeck. This afternoon, I called him and left him a message telling him that this story was going to run, and I was looking for some kind of response, but he did not return my call.